I mean, we live in a country, I, I do think this is strange. Politicians are more comfortable talking about religion and God than they are about science and numbers and facts. Now, that's odd. I mean, it's not that they can't talk about the former, but it's almost like they have to talk about the former, whereas talking about science is considered to be just, it's going to harm you. And I actually think that we've got to get past that if we're going to be able to make progress in some of the big issues we have today. Do you think that uh, as, scientists, as a scientist, other scientists would look down on you if you got involved in talking about these issues in public? You know, I, mean, I remember Carl Sagan was, was beat up by other scientists. He couldn't get into the National Academies because uh, he, was, he was a popular writer. Fortunately, I'm in the Academy already. So. <laughs> we won't um, worry about that. <laughs> um, I, I do think there is, a, there is a cultural issue. And the fact is, it's very hard to do science and to do a lot of other stuff. But I do think that rather than go into administration in the university, some people can, can play a role in this. And also, in terms of what other scientists think, I, I do think it's just important to keep valuing your science. If you keep doing science, I mean, it has to be acknowledged. You can do the other things too. And, and the other things are more public, which is from, you know, I wrote a libretto for an opera. It was probably like 1% of my time. Right. But everyone would ask me about it because it was so weird. And so I think if you speak publicly, of course it's public, so people see that. And they don't see all the time you're spending in your office working out equations or working out theories. So it's true, it gets distorted. But I do think, again, that if, if scientists don't speak out, I don't know who will speak but, out. And, and they bring special analytic skills to a problem mm -hmm. that a politician doesn't, or doesn't want to. That's right, and, it's, and people focus on those analytic skills, but it's also more, more general than that. It's not just solving a system of equations, it's asking, asking the right questions, or making sure you're asking the right questions, or understanding what are the assumptions you're making. I mean, these aren't things that only scientists can do, but scientists know that this is part of what they do. For example, um, in the, with no offense to Steve Cousins, or, but in the, in the previous talk, we were told there's one million robots and there's 20 million jobs that we need. So therefore, it's not robots. Well, I don't know. Maybe a robot does the work of 20 human beings, 100 human beings. I mean, it matters to know all the parameters. You can't simply, so when you, even when you hear things that sound like data, they have to be properly interpreted. You have to make sure you're asking the right questions. You have to make sure you understand what is the range of uncertainty in those assumptions. I mean, we saw that with the economic crisis. There, there, were, there were predictions, but they were based on the economy continuing more or less like it had been. That was a bad assumption, and there, should, there was a large degree of uncertainty associated with that. So I think in those ways, having scientists there saying, what, what is your data, but also what is the question you're asking would help quite a bit. Indeed.